So I got into crypto in 18, 2018. That was the first cycle. I lost a bit of money there. It's a very small sum. I got into Terra last year, February. I was very enthusiastic. So most of my Luna was actually locked up and I couldn't sell it during the crash. And I had a lot of my stablecoin holdings in UST. I ended up losing a good portion of my portfolio during that crash. I would say probably buy a nice car. Did it come as a shock to you that a supposedly stable coin could collapse like this? Yeah, I mean, with the benefit of hindsight, I, I could say that it wasn't a shock, right? But that wouldn't be very truthful because Luna was sufficiently different from previous projects. It became reasonable to allocate to it. So there were actually new banks that were being built on it using Anchor as a backend. You could use the ecosystem to buy stocks, buy NFTs. And it was very much like the real world adoption that many crypto investors were imagining. It was reasonable to believe that uh, this time it's different for Terra. I usually, at a very basic level, I try to limit my exposure to any one token or ecosystem to about 20%, 15%. I got greedy with Terra. I let it go way past my safety limits. So I think going forward, we have to be more disciplined in how we do it. Another thing was that when I was doing my due diligence, I was also keeping a very close eye on the sustainability of the system because it's a ticking time bomb in some cases. At the start, I viewed the 20% yield as a customer acquisition cost for the system. And this worked well because it led to Terra rising to accounting for about 10% of all of crypto total value lock across multiple chains. Things really started becoming questionable when most of the value lock was just locked inside Anchor and that actually posed a lot of sustainability questions for the ecosystem as well. The mistake made here was that we all subconsciously knew that we were playing a game of musical chess but we just didn't want to admit that the music was slowing down and continued playing. So a big part of how Terra got so popular was because there was a lot of retail adoption. So a lot of people were actually putting their life savings in Anchor and thinking that the yield on Anchor was going to help with their mortgage. There's a lot of peer pressure and FOMO or fear of missing out. So a lot of people actually overexposed themselves because three out of five of their friends invested in it. The number one lesson learned here is that there needs to be a lot more education in the space. But at its core, the risk of a lot of crypto investments are not fully appreciated by the everyday investor. There needs to be a way to mentally account for your money. So you need to only put money that you're okay to risk at risk. The second thing is that we need to be able to measure our portfolio value in terms of the bottoms, not the tops. A lot of the fever that got on was actually investors who had a preconceived notion that, oh, they used to be a millionaire, for example. So a lot of them were trying to buy the next big thing to get back their millionaire status. So that's actually one of the big reasons why a lot of people are on leverage and were buying Luna on debt and depositing it in Anchor. The third advice I think that should be made known is that at the end of the day, we owe it to ourselves to do proper due diligence. Don't be afraid to ask more experienced people in the space. My comments in crypto as becoming a key part of the future has not really been impacted. But I would say that some things have changed now. So definitely we we'll have to live in an area of greater regulatory risk. Recent developments have definitely set the space back at least one or two years. These are people that have lost their life savings and chances are that they are not coming back to crypto for at least five years and they will spend the next five years telling people that don't put your money in crypto. Institutions such as, let's say, banks or even companies, right? They'll be less comfortable with allocating capital to crypto now. I'm very hopeful on crypto as an asset class because I think it proposes an alternative, especially a younger generation, to do many different things. So for one, I'm not going to get rich buying property at this age. We're also entering an era of lower yields and investment returns. So definitely from a financial point of view, crypto it has a lot of opportunities for younger people. 